What's up, everybody? It's Andrew from the Jaguar Podcast, and today is our first episode of Teal Takes. And uh, we have a great show in for you. We uh, have a returning guest, Paul Spicer. But before I introduce him, I'm going to do a quick shout out to uh, one of our partners and affiliates, uh, flteams.com. It is a great sports website to cover all things Florida sports. That's flteams.com. So today I have uh, actually a returning guest, um, former Jacksonville Jaguars defensive lineman and coach Paul Spicer. He played uh, with the Jaguars from 2008, excuse me, from 2000 to 2008. And he was also assistant defensive line coach for the Jaguars and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Give it up for my man, the great Paul Spicer. <laughs> What's up, Paul? How's it going, man? Oh man, it's going it's going right now. Just you know what? Just trying to take it day by day, trying to stay safe out there. Every time I turn on the TV, it seems like there's a new variant. So just trying to keep my family safe and, and stay stay healthy. Yeah, same here, man. But thank God we have sports. We can kind of escape for a little bit and 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 find some enjoyment in these crazy times. I'm telling you, sports is the cure to stress, man. I, I used when I used to play, I used to love to be able to go to practice and just let loose and release. You know, I mean, I think even if you're not an athlete, you know, you just love watching sports. It's still a rush. You still get that adrenaline and you get the chills and you allow it to just kind of release and get that. You know, it's been especially been going through these stressful times dealing with everything we've been dealing with the past year, two years. You know, we need we need it. And I'm glad that we able, you know, the. um you know, professional sport teams can go out there and and put a product on the field that we can be proud of and and um, allow us to be able to have those releases. Yeah, I mean, it is it, the Jaguars, man. It is. I mean, it's been a long time since we talked, so we have a lot to catch up on with the with the Jaguars. And I mean, let, let's jump into it, man. Urban Meyer fired a few weeks ago. Uh, total total clown show um <laughs> i mean it, it has just been one thing after another with this guy i i was um i was not for the hire i know you kind of had some thoughts on that as well um but what's your take on the whole urban meyer disaster and how that all kind of uh, unfoiled man it, it's really unfortunate because as i said um many times that many people you know despite where i am in my career you know, Jacksonville is always going to be home. Um, the organization is going to always have a soft spot in my heart, um, a place in my heart. Uh, because, again, I spent nine years as a part of that organization as a player and two years as a coach. And, you know, when I see things like this happening, it, it continues, to, you know, the organization continues to take steps backwards. Um, you know, 2007, you thought they ascended um, to a place that, you know, hey, it's a hard place to get to a game before the Super Bowl. That's very hard for a lot of teams. But at least you would say that you saw that and you would say, okay, well, maybe we're on the right track. You know, maybe they got it kind of figured out. And all of a sudden the wheels fell off after that. And, um, you know, they lost a lot of great talent. And, you know, Urban Meyer hire, I, like you said, you wasn't for it. I wasn't for it. And, you know, my main reason is because I haven't seen a college guy like Urban Meyer. And I'm not even talking about all the stuff, all the baggage that Urban Meyer carries. I mean, he has a lot of baggage, and that's clearly not the case that I'm making. It's just the fact that I have not seen a college coach come into the NFL without exp NFL experience, excuse me, without NFL experience and make that transition and be successful. Um, you know, so I don't know where they, what analytics they were looking at when they hired him, you know, cause I'm sure it was probably a part of the process, but, um, it's unfortunate that his, uh, baggage caught up to him and it was on display. And that's the, one of the biggest things that I was telling a friend of mine that's different between college football than NFL as a coach. Cause I've been on both sides is that, you know, your personal life and the things you do in college, you can keep it un under, under wraps a little bit better than you can in NFL. NFL, man, that camera, that microphone, you know, that purse, that keypad is in your face and people are, are at you. And it doesn't matter where you are. 
and they will they will exploit it the best way they know how and it's unfortunate and i don't think you know i'm pretty sure some people might have told Evan meyer going into the jaguar job but you know when you've been doing something a certain way for so long he wasn't li- he didn't listen and he said you know i got this and unfortunately he really didn't yeah it just oh my gosh man it was just a, a total dumpster fire i mean from from the get i just couldn't believe the stories i was hearing i mean i don't know what you were hearing i know you're you know you're you're connected uh you know in jacksonville um yeah you know, i just couldn't believe it when i heard that he did not fly back one with the team after that after that loss in cincinnati and then the josh lambo thing where he kicked the kicker i mean yeah that was just that was just out of control um i mean if that happened luckily it was yeah i mean i want to say luckily but if that was somebody like a defensive lineman or a linebacker i mean somebody somebody would have got hurt really badly (laughs) oh you better believe it he would have got jumped on because again in college you can control players um way on a whole nother level than you can in the NFL. It, it, these are grown men in the NFL. They are professional. Just like as a coach, you're a professional. And you have to conduct yourself as such. But unfortunately, we do have certain coaches that have these, they, their egos get the best of them. And they, you know, they lash out and they do things that are unbecoming a professional. And that's, and if that story is true, which like I said, I don't know. I mean, I mean, again, Josh, you know, Lambo said it. If he said it, then you know, hey, I don't know the guy, you know. So, like I said, I wasn't there, um, but you know, I mean, I heard the story about Urban Meyer calling all the coaches losers, and you know, and directing it as if they have never won anything, and he's the only one that's won something because of his national championships in college. And it's, it's, you know, I guess sometimes it's like he has to realize when you step across those lines as a professional, you know, as an NFL, you know, uh, coach, even as a player, when these college guys come from college and come to the pros, there's so much they have to learn. You know, I, I learned it when I came out of college. Um, it doesn't matter where you drafted. It doesn't matter what school you went to. If you're from the SEC or the ACC or Big Ten, it doesn't matter where you come from. Because when you walk through those doors of a professional organization, hey, man, you at the bottom. <laughs> you got to work your way up. You got to earn respect. You got to show people your character and who you are and what you're about. And as they see you live up to what you say you are, then that, and, you, and as you treat others, you're going to start gaining the respect of, of your peers as well as, as, your, as your team. And... I think there needs to be a mutual respect when coaches come from college to the pros. You can't come with that college that college mentality of talking to the players any kind of way and saying things, you know, being disrespectful. That ain't gonna fly in the NFL. It's not. No. Either two things gonna happen. You're gonna get your ass beat, excuse my French. <laughs> you can get the beat down, which is 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 not likely, but it can it has happened. I've there's been there's there's been a lot of stories in NFL where players have jumped up on coaches and <laughs> because coaches, you know, again, they, they, they talk out of turn. They say things that are very disrespectful and, and that doesn't fly. And the second thing is you lose your job. You lose your job because owners, you know what they understand it, it takes, you know, when you come in as a coach and you're doing things to the, to the players where the players can't be their best at their best, it takes away from them. Well, guess what? The ownership got to realize it and, and get the guy out of there. Yeah. And that's I mean, what they did with Urban Meyer. I just can't believe it took this long. I mean, when I heard about the whole viral video and then the not flying back with the team, which is just unheard of. I mean, I, I just could not. I I, th- I would have, if I was the GM, I would have. I would have said bye bye. Week four after week four, bye bye. You know, we gotta we gotta write the ship. Um, but it's just crazy how 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 out of control it got. And then we end up ruining, you know, what Josh Lambeau, who has had the fourth highest accuracy in the NFL kicking. And I just noticed something, man. When I was watching the games, I was like, he just doesn't, he didn't look right. I made a video about this where I, I kind of made a, I had a little theory that he had he had gotten into Josh's head because 
you know, Urban has been known to be kind of psychological like that and mm -hmm. talk about him getting into players' heads. But it's just a shame, like the downward spiral. And now I guess we're picking up the pieces and we, we still yeah. have we still have Trent Balky. What are your thoughts on that? That's you know, I, I, I was thinking about it last night. I don't know if, you know, was Urban a Trent Balk Balky hire or a owner Shah Khan hire. I, I, you know, I think if it was more on the, on the ownership side of things, uh, when it came to the hiring of uh, Urban Meyer, then, you know, Balky going to get a pass. Um, you know, so many times you, you see that take place that transpires in the national football league where owners are enamored with a coach and they don't care. They, they don't care what the front office say. They want that coach, you know, um, I can clearly remember when when I was there and, you know, Shah just got there and he was enamored with Tim Tebow. And um, I tell this story, you know, every now and then I tell people that, you know, he wanted Tim Tebow and Mike Malarkey didn't want Tim Tebow. You know, the coaches, the offensive staff didn't want him. And it literally came down to Tim Tebow. Did he really want to come to Jacksonville or not? And you know, I tell people, you know, that I talked to in Jacksonville when they when when this whole Tebow thing started um, earlier this earlier last year, you know, before the season, when they brought in Tim Tebow years later, much years later, I mean, many years later, I said it's Tim Tebow's fault um, that he is where he is because when he had the opportunity in the 2012, I think it was 2012 to come to the Jaguars um, with full support of the ownership. Um, now, it would have been a little rough because, you know, when a coach is told he got to do something and he don't want to do it, again, you know, as a coach, you still want to be able to, you know, coach your team the way you want to coach your team and, you know, give your team the best chance to win. And you feel like a player is not that guy. It's going to be hard to kind of coach a little bit. But if the owner wants it, you know, you need to make it happen. and despite the personal feelings of the offensive staff, you know, if Tim Tebow decided to come to Jacksonville, hey man, he would have been to Jacksonville. And Tim Tebow decided to go to New York, which, in, I mean, looking back, you know what? I, if it was me, I would like, Tim, man, bring your butt to Jacksonville. You would have been a god almost. <laughs> you know, I mean, the way, you know, Gator Nation would have embraced that dude because of what he, you know, what he's done and, and what he's about. And I'm not saying Tim Tebow's a bad dude or anything like that, but man, he could have, he could have came to Jacksonville. And, I, and like I said, I don't know what would have happened. I'm not going to say he went out there and stunk it up or anything like that, but you know, Hey, he wasn't a very good quarterback, but Hey, they would have gave you a shot. And why not take that shot with a place that you got a lot more rope. If you understand where I'm coming from, but um but you know it didn't happen, and unfortunately we went with the next best thing, and which was his coach, <laughs> and unfortunately that didn't work out either. So here we are. Well, that's a really interesting story, Paul. I never knew that that Mike Malarkey, or excuse me, the ownership wanted to bring in Tebow back when Mike Malarkey was here, and then I mean it makes the whole Tebow thing that transpired this this off season it makes so much more sense now that that they always wanted him and they always wanted yeah. to bring him in. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, the whole tight end thing, him playing tight end, I mean, it really, I don't know, to me, was a little dis disrespectful too to tight ends. I mean, guys like um, Kelsey and, and I mean, it's hard to play tight end. It's not just something you can jump in there and kind of just pick up. I mean, these are guys that are dealing with amazing defensive uh, players and athletes. I mean, it's not an easy thing to do at all. And to yeah, think absolutely. that you can just jump in there and do that. I was no, and Tim Tebow doesn't have the makeup to play tight end. I mean, I'm sorry. He he, athletically maybe, and that's a big maybe. But from a standpoint of of what you have to do in those trenches, you don't go from quarterback to tight end in National Football League. I was sitting out what six years. Yeah, um, just that just don't happen. And um, you know they had to find a place for him. Um, but again, if you know. I don't want to make this show about Tebow, but like I said, because I was in the room, in those rooms, if Tebow wanted to make the transition many years ago, 
Maybe he's still be in the NFL now. I, I don't know. But I knew many years ago he was unwilling to make the transition. And, um, you know, people want to say how much of a team guy he is. Well, dude, if you were such a big team guy, make the transition. When you were younger and more athletic and, and you know, but maybe maybe be able to learn another position. But when he was not, hey, it, it, it ended up eroding to where it became, you know, a circus um, show and, you know, going out there trying to play tight end in your 30s and you've never done it before. I mean, that, that was just, you know, embarrassing on his part. Well, and he got paid too, right? He got paid a million, like a million dollars or something to, to, to do that. I mean, wow. and I feel like that roster spot could have gone – to somebody else i mean and well, I, mean, I, 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 I didn't know the numbers as far as what they paid him to bring him in but you know i mean hey i don't know i, I mean if they sold enough jerk did they sell the jerseys yeah. and, you know yeah, i don't know if they made their money on that i don't know his so, jersey was like i think the like top selling jersey for a while you know for that little <laughs> so story. they so that million bucks they gave him yeah. ah, they, they got it back yeah <laughs> <laughs> they got it back Oh man, it's crazy how the the business works. But um, yeah. So now they're you know segueing to um, you know the Trent Balky situation. That now they're talking. There's talk about Bill O'Brien being possibly the next Jaguars head coach. He's going to be interviewed, or I think he he interviewed this week, I believe. Um, so that that's a very interesting situation. Um, didn't have a lot of success with 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 players like, you know, Deshaun Watson, uh, traded, uh, uh, Deandre Hopkins out of there. Yeah. Um, yeah. didn't, didn't get along with JJ Watt, which I feel like, you know, JJ wow. Watt's like the ultimate team guy, you know, that's a guy yeah. you want in your locker room. And even, even they, they got into a shouting ma- match apparently after practice. And now JJ Watts with the Cardinals. So what are your thoughts on the whole, whole Bill O'Brien, uh, Bill O'Brien situation? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's like I'm, I'm a little torn because, you know, I guess if the GM is, is trying, I don't know if he want to make a splash or, or, or what, but it's like the last thing I think they want to do is continue reaching out to guys that's going to bring controversy. You know, I mean, you just went through the whole spiel with Urban. And there was a lot of, I mean, way more of the controversy than, than um, excuse me, Bill O'Brien. But when you look at Bill O'Brien's track record, I mean, you know, yes, the Texans did win. I mean, they 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 did make the playoffs, um, you know. But when you look at how things eroded there and how players felt alienated, um, you know, disrespected. That stuff gets out, and players talk to players, and that's the one thing I really believe that there are a lot of teams in the National Football League that has a very a disconnect from front office to the players, to the locker room. There's a disconnect, and when 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 if if there's a way that Jacksonville can figure that out, whoever they hire, can figure that out, and Get to these young players because that's where it is. You you got to be able to relate. You got to be able to speak to these young men in a manner that you know what they got to believe that man, this coach is for me. And you know what, when it's fourth and one, they're gonna they're gonna give you a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, you know what I'm saying to yeah. to, to get that first down for you, or to stop the team from getting the first down. Right. You know, that kicker is going to take, you know, he's going he's gonna to take another second to get his, to get his, to get the right angle to, to make that kick because he wants to win for you because he knows you're for him. But when, but when there's always, there, when, there, when, when there's a lot of question marks in their head, they're like, nah, I'm just going to rely on my talent. I'm just going to go out here and do what I do. And you hear that all the time. But what when you I'm telling you when you got when you got the players it's like yo they down for their coach yeah they're gonna go out there and do the they're gonna go do it don't get me wrong do you need more talent and all that stuff yes but 
you know what? I got I got a saying that, you know, I, I mean, this is for me. This ain't nothing that I read in a book or anything like this. I came up with this a few years ago. I need to trademark it because I know it's going to get stolen one of these days. I'm, I don't <laughs> care. But and I, I and, I, and I, I say this time to my players. I say, hey, man, talent gets you to halftime. But technique gets you to win. And what that basically means is, yeah, you can rely on your talent, but it ain't going to get you nowhere. But when you put the work in every day and refine that talent with the technique, man, the sky's the limit on what you can do as a as a as a as a athlete. The yeah, sky's the limit. Yeah, and yeah. Um, you know you want those players, those young players in Jacksonville, to have a coach that they feel like you know what, man, this dad, this guy, this, this guy's for me. And like I said, I just think too many times the front office folks, they quick to jump to what has this coach has done and and he's won or or we got a relationship. We got the same agent, you know, type of business or that's my buddy type of business and not look at the fact that, man, is this guy, can he come in and, and really relate to this young team, because Jackson was young. They don't have no old heads on their team. You know, I mean, I can't think of a guy right now on their squad. Maybe Linder might be the oldest, oldest cat in there, you know, but I, I can't think of any old guys on that on their squad right now um, that, you know, you, you can see that, oh, yeah, that's the guy. I mean, and right now, honestly, another thing that I think the team is missing that I think the front office needs take considerations that man they need leadership they need true leadership i was just gonna say that i mean we took a beating against uh, the patriots like it was it was tough to watch and the only player that went out and spoke to the media was trevor lawrence who's a rookie and i mean he's showing the most leadership i feel like on that team none of the captains went out and did any media you know, Josh Allen wasn't out there. Miles Jack, you didn't see any of them. And, and it was just, it was disappointing, Paul. You know, it's like, I think you hit it right on, on the head there. Leadership. That is what this team needs and culture. And, oh, yeah. It and, comes, trust me, when I was in Jacksonville, that was the one thing that I, you know, you talk to anybody that, that played with me, that played with those teams that I, I was a part of, we had leadership. Okay, we that I, I if it, that was one of the things that helped allow me to be a captain. I wasn't the best player. I wasn't the highest paid player. I wasn't the Pro Bowl guy. I didn't care. And that's another thing that you know. Don't get me wrong, because the coach side of me will come out. And that's another thing is that you know a lot of these players, man, they just want to be role guys. They just want to be one of the guys. They don't want to be the guy that got to stand out and speak up and speak out. And, and and the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, man, you got to look in the mirror. All right? You can't sit there and just always just, you know, say, well, it was the head coach's fault. It's Urban Meyer's fault. No, bro. Urban Meyer didn't drop that pass. Urban Meyer didn't miss that tackle. Yeah. So it's like, you know, again, we, I mean, it, 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 unfortunately, this season turned into, you know, a shit show. Unfortunately, and, and and the head coach had a lot to do with it. But again, on the flip side of things, <laughs> hey, some of those players, you know, because I ain't gonna leave out these players either, man. And think this is gonna be all jump on the coach side. No, some of these players, you know, went out there. You know, I, some games I watch. Hey, man, Marvin Jones, you've been around, bro. Catch the damn ball. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, this young man, Trevor Lawrence, is back there. With a with a with a with a subpar offensive line, okay. Very, and, and matter of fact, the young the old line's young. Yeah, I mean Cam, um, Cam ain't an old guy. I mean he's been in the league what four years, three years. Yeah, and then you got the other kid out of Florida, um, Jawan Taylor out of Florida, um, play right tackle, Jawan uh, Taylor, Taylor. Yeah, okay, young guy been in the league two years. Okay, you got young guys. Yep. Like I said, I think Linder's the oldest guy they had up. I mean, Nor Nor Norvell and Linder is two older guys they had on the line. And 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 trust me, that Norvell guy, he, he ain't very, I mean, he he ain't nothing to, you know, sit here and write home about. But the fact of the matter is, 
these guys got to realize, okay, man, we draft you, we signed you to bring you in to help us help us win. Yeah. You know? So some of these players that they took the money because Jacksonville got a lot to spend, just like this year, they got a lot of a lot of money to spend. So those don't come to Jacksonville, take the money, and then all of a sudden you you become a, a, a average p- football player. See, that's the stuff that just you know I think needs to be driven home to some of these guys that look if you're going to come to Jacksonville and try to benefit off no state tax, the beaches, and take all this money that we're about to give you, and become a subpar average player, uh, we used to call them C players. You know, and sometimes play like a B player. No, we need A players. If you're an A player and we we paid you like an A player, then damn it, you better bring it like your A game on Sunday. And I need to see it in practice because it just don't happen on Sunday. I need to see you be an A player from Monday through Saturday. And that goes for on and off the field. Because some of these guys, you know, they get paid and they and it seems like once they got the bag, their brain went in the bag. You know, so do you think? Do you think, you know, segueing into the the coaching conversation again? Do you think Byron Leftwich would be since he's a player, you know, ex Jaguars, um, quarterback? Do you think that he would be a good choice because he brings that, you know, leadership and that experience of playing in Jacksonville and being a coach as well? Do you think that he would be a good a good choice? I think he. I think he can be. Um, he's still Byron. And again, he's, he's been doing a great job in Tampa, um, getting an opportunity to be around, you know, Bruce Arians is a great coach, um, to learn from Bruce Arians. He's been around Bruce Arians since Bruce Arians in Arizona. Um, he get an opportunity to be around probably the best that's going to go down in history as probably the best quarterback ever. And Tom Brady, um, to have that plug into a guy like Tom Brady, to where even if Jags do hire um, left witch, that you know what, hey, make the connection Trevor Lawrence and Brady. You know, put them guys together. Let Trevor Lawrence either come to Tampa or wherever Brady is in California or wherever he is. Go train with Brady. Go do what Brady do. And I'm not saying you're gonna be Brady, but just from a standpoint of through osmosis, you're gonna be able to soak up something. That can help you because Brady is doing it 20 plus years, man. You don't yeah. get to 20 plus years by stinking it up. No, you get to 20 plus years by putting in that work in the off season. And sometimes it's work that you ain't going to want to do. But man, this guy got seven rings. Hey, if I was a young quarterback, man, I tell you what, I'd be in a sleeping bag in a tent outside Brady's door <laughs> in the off season. All yeah. right. And to have Leftwich come in with that plug already and just say, hey, Brady, you know, I, I I just need you. Could you take a few weeks, you know, with this guy? And, and, and you know, Brady ain't there to coach him. But just just be able to show him, you know, how to take care of his body. Yeah. Just be able to show him some of the things you do to get ready for the season. And Brady got to do a lot. OK, he's in his 40s. All right. I mean, my fourth. I know. I know how it takes a lot to get out the bed. So I know for Brady to get on that field, it takes a lot. And why not learn it now as a young 20 something where nothing hurts? You wake up and roll out of bed and you ain't feeling a thing. Why not learn it now? Learn about the habit bear oxygen chamber. Learn about those things, you know, now from a guy like Tom Brady. So I think Byron, I think Byron can be. You know, especially with Byron's experience as well as a player, as you mentioned earlier, um, he knows Jacksonville. He lives there, um, so he does know you know the community and the co- in the culture in that city um, a little bit better than most um, guys. I, I saw that Byron, as well as Keller Moore, get interviewed um, by the Jaguars either today or tomorrow. Um, I think it was today or yesterday, but um, I think you know, like I said, hey have you know a guy like that to kind of come in and relate to your quarterback because i like you mentioned trevor lawrence was a guy that stepped up after taking a shellacking by new england you know getting beat by almost 50 points and saying you know hey you know put it he put it he put it on his back 
I mean, that is the making of a good leader. Um, yeah. You know, because I, I I know how it feels. You know, you lose like that. I've had games where I lost like that. And, yes, I spoke to the media and, and, and I had my heart on my sleeve and told them exactly how I felt about our play, not, you know, and the lack thereof and how embarrassing it was for our fans to have to watch that. And I, it was embarrassing, you know, to have to watch, you know, our team, the Jaguars, go out there in New England and lose the way they did in that fashion. You know, and I know a few of those coaches on that staff personally, and I know they were pissed, you know, to, to lose like that. So it's going to be um, very interesting, you know, in these next few weeks to see who the Jaguars decide to bring in is going to lead this team and it, i think it really needs to be a guy that can relate um it needs to it be a guy that's going to bring energy um to the organization um into the locker room and be able to build a bond between the, the coach's office and that locker room you know i can't speak on front front office because you know balky's there and i don't know what he's doing to try to mend that you know um, too many times you see GMs, they walk the halls and they speak to players and on game day, they got their arm around guys and trying to give guys, you know, to their two cent on what they can do to be better. Man, that ain't going to work. <laughs> that don't work. You know, I think it needs to be much more than, um, you know, the say la vies and things that they these, don't these GMs do um, game day and walk around in their suits on game day and then sweats throughout the week. And just to, you know, try to shoot the shoot the crap with the players every now and then. Man, go down there and 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 feel the pulse of the locker room and understand the locker room and understand what you got to do as a GM to make that team better. You know, yeah. it, it, it sometimes it might be a guy that you're sitting there talking to that you need to get rid of because um, he's not a he's not good enough, and he he he's at his he's hit his he hit this ceiling of his talent, um, and and you know. He's not doing anything to break through. And then that's the thing about, about being a professional athlete. What are you doing to break through? Because all of our talent has a ceiling. Yeah. So are you, what are you doing to break through that ceiling? And if the guy is not, you know, doing what he needs to do, then get him out of there. You know, get him out of there and get some, get, get another guy. Get a guy that's going to work. Because there are a lot of players out there that are hungry, that are, that are grinding every day. To, to, to get an opportunity to, 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 to grace that, you know, national football field. I mean, because I tell you what, I, I know the feeling, how it felt for me um, coming back to Canada and getting the opportunity with Detroit Lions. And when I got cut, man, it was a sucky feeling. But when I got the opportunity to, to work out for um, Coughlin and John Pease, may God rest his soul, I tell you what man i bust my pump my tongue was hanging out my mouth because i've never been to florida but one time against in the preseason against miami but i was out there in that florida heat about to die and yeah. i but i would not let um coach Pease and coach coughlin see me you know look like i'm about to die i felt like it but i didn't look like it yeah and um you know what it was it was good enough that day to convince them to sign me and uh, but I continue to work though I continue to, to show them that I was you know not only appreciative of the opportunity but I can be a part of the team yeah you know what I'm saying the practice squad wasn't good enough you know go, going and getting activated wasn't good enough you know what I'm saying yeah and I kept grinding and doing the things I needed to do and the next thing you know, I'm a starter. Oh, next thing you know, I'm a captain of the team. You know, what, what are you doing? I mean, that's the whole thing that I, when I look at players, I'm like, are you trying to ascend in your profession or are you good where you are? Are you good where you're at? And, bro, we don't need you. I need players trying to ascend. That's what Jacksonville needed at the end of the day. So I hope Balky is looking for, as him and Shaq Khan, as they look for the coaches, if the coach got that same mindset, is that coach coming in here? Everybody can say, yes, we, we want to win a Super Bowl. That's easy. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear nobody on the, on the, um, on their, I mean, whoever they hire, I don't want to hear them get up there on the podium and talk about, oh, you know, we're going, we're going to do this to win a Super Bowl. I don't want to hear that speech. I want, I want to hear 
I'm coming in here to change this environment, change the culture of this team to where I want guys who want to be here, who want to do it the right way. It ain't about so much my way because my way doesn't mean it's right way because I'm this new head coach. It's, 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 it's a collaboration of the coaching staff, the front office, the ownership, and the, and the players. All of us working together, and we can bring it, and we can do, if we do that, we can bring a championship to this city. If yeah. Can, I feel like we need guys like, I mean, you played with John alongside John Henderson and, and, and Marcus Stroud. I mean, we need guys like that are, that have energy, you know, that, that, that want to be there, that can get the team, team, you know, G'd up and ready. I mean, I remember I've, I always watched the, the locker room uh, video of John Henderson and the slap and him, <laughs> him that getting was crazy. Up. That. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw you too. You were right there. He ran right by you and he, and we need guys like that. Just, just bring energy back into that locker room. Cause I feel like it, it's like a graveyard. It's just, you know, people, and I, I mean, I, I get it. It's a, it's a tough situation, but I mean, we need energy like that. But, but I'll tell you, and I ain't gonna lie. I'll be honest with you. You know, um, Jack Del Rio, man, his, his first five years, it was like that. Jack, yeah. Jack was like, yo, we, we go, let's roll. Let's, let's go out here and beat the dog crap out of these guys. <laughs> you know, Jack used to be like, Hey, this is a double chin strap game. <laughs> let's go do let's 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 buckle up and but but uh, but you know what though not just coming from the head guy myself and mike peterson big john stroud donovan darius you know there i mean Deion grant man we had guys that were like yo we ain't about letting nobody come up in this come up in here You're just gonna run down our throat hell no we ain't doing that i mean you had guys with that sense of pride not only in themselves, but they were projecting it outward amongst their teammates. Because don't get me wrong, Fred Taylor, he wasn't a big talk guy. I mean, Fred was like, yo, man, I just need the ball. Just give me the ball, man. That's all. I'm good. You know? I mean, don't get me, Mojo was a little more, a lot more talkative. And that's why probably Mojo's on, on NFL <laughs> Network now. Because Mojo was a constant talker. But you know what? He backed it up. Yeah. He backed it up. Pocket Don't Hercules. You ain't gonna walk it. Shut up. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing. Sometimes I think a lot of players don't realize either is that day, man. Don't 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 get on social media and, and bump your gums. You know, <laughs> internet gangsters. All these internet gangsters out here. But yet instead, when I see you on the field or I, I see you out there, you know, playing, I don't I don't see the guy I see, you know, on social media. Don't don't talk all that. Don't don't you know? Don't let your fans, you know show who you are you show who you are by your play exactly your play. and i mean i appreciate all the guys that go out there in the community that's a part of it great but it, it but you can't be a community leader and locker room good can't be that man can't work can't work you know i want you to be a, a community leader a locker room leader okay i want you to be an a player all those things. You got to be it all. You can't be sometimey. Can't be wishy washy. Got to be. Got to be that guy at all times. At all times. Because you ask anybody in Jacksonville that been around me and knows me, I was like that all the time. You know. I mean, I'm gonna give you my all all the time. Hey, you, you we rolling? Let's roll. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. And you know what? When I was out in the community doing all my community stuff that I did, which I did a lot, I gave my all. You know, uh, practice. Hey, there was some times I didn't want to practice. You know, practice is it, it was rough, but you know what? I gave my all. You know, yeah. I wish I had some of them back because I could have gave more. But at the end of the day, um, I felt like looking back on just looking back on my career, I I gave more times than not. You know, because hey, we I'm human. And I'm not gonna sit there and act like I was Superman and just every day I was on cloud. I was on a hundred. 100 as the, as the guys say you you know i wasn't 100 every day but i got more days at a 100 than i don't than i and then days that i wasn't 100 so you know it, it, it's going to be very interesting like i said in the next couple couple of weeks that bringing a guy that's going to 
galvanize that locker room and those players and the organization to spearhead it to somewhere that it hasn't been in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping we can get somebody who can just light a fire, you know, under some of these players and get them going and, 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 and get some more energy back. You know, like you were saying, it, like uh, with, with Jack Del Rio and, you know, guys like Donovan Darius and we need players like that, 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 that are hungry and, and, and can get this team motivated. Um, I'm going to go to the comments here just to show some of these. Uh, we have a comment from uh, Payo Time. He's an L.A. Rams YouTuber. Hey, Andrew Paul, hope you are both well. Uh, one here from uh, Charlie Boy. Just in time, Happy New Year's, you guys. Thank you, Charlie Boy. Then we have uh, one from Brad Myers. Congrats to Paul for being one of the greatest 30 players in Jaguars history. Man, didn't even know. <laughs> didn't even know. Right? You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't even know. I just, you know what? I was just, like I said, a guy that was willing to lay it on the line for my teammate, more, the organization, and that community. Just like I do as a, as a father, as a husband, you know what I'm saying, as a friend. My 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 friends, the guys that I roll with, they know. Hey, I got. They know I got their back. Yeah. And when I when I play, even again, even now, you know, one of my teammates called me, man. If I could help, my help them. You know, um, because I looked at all those guys as brothers um, from another mother. You know, and you know what? As a matter of fact, I bumped into a teammate a couple of days ago in my community. Didn't even know he lived here. <laughs> so, um, That's awesome. He came. He came in a little later in my career, but you know, LeBron and Tofield, who was a running back at LSU that we drafted, okay. and uh, good dude. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, it, it's something that it's a eternity um, in a sense that you know, and that's just me. That's the way I take it. Uh, I can't say every guy is going to say that, but you know what, Uche Uneri, you, you talked about him um, before. Uh, you know, hey. Man, I want to see all those guys, the guys I played with, doing well now that they retired, you know, doing something. You yeah. know, if it's football related, great. If it's not, hey, whatever it is, real estate, whatever, do your thing, man, and do it at the best of your ability because no matter what you're doing in life, after your career is over, you can still bring that same drive and same passion and energy to your new career. You know, I mean, I'm a coach now. And man, I'm I'm giving my all just like I did as a player, um, as a coach, you know, and that's what that's what I bring, you know, to, to coaching staff that I've been a part of. Yeah, you mentioned running backs, and you know, Paul, you were an undrafted free agent, um, and it kind of makes me think of James Robinson, who, you know, is a great back, had a thousand yards rushing in in twenty uh, twenty twenty, but um, now you know he's coming off a. a, a a um Achilles Achilles injury and and he's had surgery um you know you've seen a lot of running backs like Maurice Jones Drew he had Liz Frank so does um so does um Travis Etienne do you think this is a pretty serious thing do you think he's going to have a, a a smooth recovery or you know what I mean I thought he had an Achilles um that he got hurt was it Achilles yeah, he had like a torn Achilles, I think. Yeah, and and, and that's rough um, for a running back, you know, because like I said, having Achilles usually it takes you know to be fully healed. I've heard two years, um, but you know what, the guy, you know, he showed a lot, and I think you know what, despite everything that was going on this year, I think he would have got another thousand yards if he didn't get hurt. You know, yeah. um, he was already over 700 yards anyway when he got hurt. Um, and if, even with getting benched, which was a whole nother, another story, whole nother, <laughs> another urbanist, urbanist story on top of everything else. Um, <laughs> you know, but the fact of the matter is, is that he was a, you know, he's a good player. I, I feel like he's one of those players that you do want on your team because for a guy, he came in there last year despite the record, despite what was going on. And he gave him this, and he gave you his he gave you his all, you know. And I'm 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 a guy out of out of a small school and and un, was undrafted. 
And I like guys like James Robinson, you know, because when you undrafted, man, you 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 want, you know, you come in with a mindset of, I gotta I gotta show these guys I do belong. I gotta show these guys I should have been drafted, you know, because I've been around some draft picks that boy they shouldn't have been drafted at all. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, like I said, unfortunately, it is what it is. That's the organization making a decision. But the fact of the matter is, is that this guy, James Robinson, that I think that if he can, you know, get healthy, get back, Travis Etienne, he comes in um after coming out coming off his injury. He's gonna be fresh, you know. I mean, coming out of college, this kid has home run speed. That's a nice combination, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. In NFL, it's all about what have you done lately, and it's, we always trying to improve. And what that means is, is that we always looking to get better with somebody else. Um, now, don't know, but every year there's a there's a thousand there's thousands of players coming out trying to prove themselves. Yep trying to prove that they're good enough and that some will get drafted, some won't. And, hey, if Robinson, the good thing about him, he's already has some stats in the book that he he, he can do it. That bodes well for him moving forward. Um, but if he can't come back um, and be productive as he's been, then you know what? They just going to find – they'll find somebody else real fast or somebody else that's already there will take his spot. Um, you know, and it's this being a professional athlete, you, you gotta be thin skinned, man. At the end of the day, you know, everybody there are coming in to take your job. Yeah. You know, when I came in the league, I heard the same spiel. Hey man, you coming to take my job. So, you know, don't look for me to help you and all this. And, you know, that's fine. I just sit back and watch the watch those guys, those professionals, because at the point I felt like I wasn't a professional, but I learned and as I grew and and you know applied what I've what I've watched and what I've learned, you know what? I became a professional. And and um, you know, hey, it's a part of the business. So I I pray that John I me mean, um Jake Robinson is healthy and can come back and still be productive. And be a one-two punch with Travis T. D. N. The last time the Jaguars had a, a good one-two punch was Fred Taylor and uh, Mojo. Yeah. And you saw that. I mean, those guys, boy. I mean, hey, Fred was a guy that you know would take a crease and go to the. He's gone. And yeah. Mojo, he's going. He was like a little bowling ball, you know, a little battering ram, just running around. You know, uh, looked like neck and neck of He Man. That's that's probably that's probably before your time there, Andrew. I don't know if you remember it, Mech, I mean, Mech and Mech from He Man, <laughs> a little guy with no neck, but um, <laughs> a little character. But but you know, Mojo man, you know, love him. He, he's a great dude. You know, uh, got more confidence. He got enough confidence for all of us. Uh, but uh, you got to be that sometimes when people are going to sit there and uh, question if you're going to be good enough. And I think Mojo answered those questions while he played. But um, you know, getting back on topic of you know. Him and Fred had a great relationship. It wasn't about how many carries did you get, how many carries did you get. It wasn't no, you know, uh, uh, word is, is slipping my mind right now. But there was no animosity or anything between those two guys. Those two guys, I mean, they 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 went at it every day in practice. They went at it even playing Madden. You know, <laughs> both of them thought they were the best Madden players. You know, even to this day. Um, but um, but you know what? They had a great relationship, man, and I think it it, it made their play. It, it, you showed it. It showed in their play because it was a it was a healthy competition. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you want on your team. You want that healthy competition because sometimes you know players within themselves can help each other. You know, and um, we'll see we'll see how that that bowls well bowls for uh, James Robinson when he comes back from his injury. Yeah. As well as Etn, which he hasn't done anything yet, so we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I hope he comes back too, and I hope the front office. You know, if he has a good season, they they take care of him. You know, pay him pay him what he what he deserves. And um, but man, you brought back memories of the Maurice Jones Drew. I remember watching. Uh, I was I was watching on YouTube. He uh, was in pass protection, and he just lit up Sean Merriman. I mean, he put Sherry oh, yeah. Sean Merriman on his butt, and that was impressive. I mean, 
a, a guy like you know of Maurice Jones uh, Drews of his size, and then putting a hit on a linebacker and just knocking him down. I mean, it was it was awesome. Oh man, hey, like I said, people are underestimated Mojo, man. But let me tell you, that guy, you underestimated him. You, you, you didn't know, you didn't, you, you didn't do your homework. And a <laughs> yeah. lot of guys didn't. And Sean Merriman at the time, I think that was the beginning of the end for him anyway. Because once he took that hit, it was like he, they, nobody would let him live it down. Because <laughs> yeah. you got a guy that's five, six, five, seven on a good day. And here you come in 6'4", 250, off the edge, thinking you're just going to mow him over. And he just flat. I, I can remember it like it was yesterday. It was on the north end zone um, <laughs> in, in our stadium at the time. Um, and, man, it, whew, it, it, it lit a fire up on the whole team. And we all saw it. And they played it on the, on the Jumbotron. And, and, man, let me tell you, we just – we ended up beating them anyway. Um, at that uh, the Chargers that day, but um, that was one of those plays that really just energizes the whole team, you know. Yeah, and and, and Fred Taylor and Maurice Jones Drew, I mean, they were an amazing combination, a dynamic duo. I mean, they just fed off of each other. I mean, it was amazing to watch. And and Maurice Jones Drew, I mean, he could do it all. I mean, he was doing kickoff returns. Uh, I mean. He was he was good in pass protection. He could run north south or run over you. I mean, he was just just an amazing player. And that and that's what you know the front office again has to do with you know the, the scouting department and whatnot. And you know, I, like I said, it's going to take um, you know Valky and the scouting department and um, you know that whole front office to really take a look at, you know, and I'm sure they will take a look at the roster and see, okay, you know, here's the areas we got to improve. Um, it sucks because they don't really have coaches there to help them because you know what, you would love to be able to kind of have the coaches staff already in place to be able to go in and kind of, and they will do a little bit of that once a new coach staff is there, because once you get hired, the new coach staff get hired, the first thing you guys going to do is go in and, uh, assess your current roster right and and go back through all the games um that your position played and look at you know their productivity um look at their strengths look at their weaknesses um you know you look i mean all the things that that, that is going to help this team um move forward and um it's going to be hard decision to make some that you know some guys are not going to like but they got to realize at the end of the day, it's a production business. If you're not production, if you're not producing, and they get rid of you, there's nobody fault but your own. At the yeah. end of the day, yeah. And um, it's going to be tough because I think you know, I'm sure you've heard of the the, the clown show or the clown movement. You know, that's going on, right? The clown movement. You know, the clown out. Everyone's changing their avatars to uh, to um, a clown with the mustache to, to <laughs> no, I, I I haven't I haven't got up on that yet. <laughs> well, that's a big thing, and now it's it's apparently there's going to be a, a, a large contingent of fans wearing clown suits to the next the final game against the Colts, um, and people are just are not happy with Shad Khan. I don't blame him myself. I'm I'm frustrated. Uh, it's just tough to go through seasons like this and then to retain your GM and, you know, to not make a change there and start over. Um, it's been very frustrating, but uh, what are your thoughts on that? Have you, I mean, I know you, you, you haven't heard about it, but I mean, do you, do you feel some empathy for Jags fans right now? I mean, I'm a fan. I'm a Jags yeah. fan. I, yeah. I, I'm, I did not know about, cause again, I'm, I'm not, I don't live in Jacksonville, um, but I did not know about the clown out deal, but um it, it it I feel for the Jaguar fans because again, another season to where you know, hey, the playoffs are like next week, and where the Jaguars yeah. at home, yeah, and all the Jaguar have fans. It's a military town, so you constantly got an influx of people coming from else somewhere else, and they're they're cheering for their team that's still playing in the playoffs. Why are you sitting there in Hooters or the pub or? you know, at the beach or wherever you may be at or, you know, or your friends for that matter, listening to them talk about 
um, you know, the Arizona Cardinals or the Cowboys or Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, or, you know, New England Patriots or whatever, whatever team that's still playing, you got to sit there and, and hear, hear all that, you know, crap. And you're like, man, damn Jaguars, you know, man, we, we need to be, I want to be in those conversations. Yeah. And, and they haven't been in those conversations since 2017. And, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, what, man, that's, you know, we all met four years ago. You know, yes. I mean, actually five years ago. Is this 2022? So, you know, that's five years ago. You know, that's, 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 and prior to 2017, it was, what was it? Um, it was what, 07? I yeah. think it was the last time. So that was 10 year drought. That's rough, man. The and that's why fans need some, you got us to get some love. They need some love, man. So, you know, I, I, I would, I would, you know, say it's, it's, it's rough. Um, to go through another all season when there's nothing going on um, with your team, um, but hopefully this this hire that that's com- that's coming soon. I'm I'm pretty sure it's coming soon. Um, you know, Shah Khan and 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 Valky and and Mark Lampkin. I'm sure he's going to be a part of it. Um, I don't even know if he's even still there, but um, no, he's still there. Khan as well. Um, all those guys going to be a part of this and. Um, bringing somebody that that will you know like i said sustain that bring in some energy and, and sustain it until the following season because right now man the fans they need something they need something to hold on to to look forward to um and hopefully that you know the powers to be can come up with some ways some you know i'm i'm sure they can um you can just look at that stadium i mean they can come up with ways to you know appease the fans for a few months until the season starts over again, which is not that long. I mean, you got the draft going to be coming up, um, you know, and there, and there's some things you can do to um, show the fans that, Hey, we hear you. We, we, we're doing everything we can um, to put a product on the field that you can be proud of, you know, yeah. that you can paint, you can paint your face for, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, instead of putting a bag over your head, a bag or a clown, a clown paint, yeah, or a clown <laughs> mask on. You don't want to, you know, that that, that craziness, man. That's you know, <laughs> that's crazy. But well, you, like were, you said, I mean, we were talking, we were talking offline yesterday, and you were saying, man, you keep remember, you keep bringing up two thousand seven, and that's why I kept bringing it up is because that was the last time. Wait, you guys were <laughs> you guys were in the playoffs before uh, twenty seventeen, and that that must have been an amazing uh, run. There was with the uh, what David Gerard at, at David Gerard at quarterback, and yeah that great run he had against Pittsburgh. And I mean, that, that was uh, probably an amazing feeling. Oh, it is. It, 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 it was, I mean, it was an amazing feeling and, you know, Garrard did a great job. Uh, Rasheen played his butt off. Um, you know, Mojo played his butt off. I mean, defense, we did what we had to do, um, you know, that year. And, you know, Pittsburgh was, a, was actually, you know, my favorite team to play against. I mean, I love playing against Pittsburgh, you know, <laughs> from day one all the way back when we was in the same conference with the Jaguars, which people like people don't even remember. Back when it was the Jacksonville Jaguars, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and Cincinnati. You don't even remember that, do you? Yeah, well, I, you know, it's funny you mentioned that um, because I joke with a lot of my my friends that are, that are Pittsburgh fans, and I say, mm-hmm. you know, Heinz Field is like, uh, you know, Duval County up north for us. We know- <laughs> <laughs> oh man i'm like we oh, love that's, that's, that's awesome love it love it <laughs> yeah you know what you're right because man <laughs> we, we 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 got more wins up in there when we played them like you know then they got wins against us so yeah in their field but um but yeah that 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 place has got great memories to beat them back to back in 2007 um you know once in the well, you know, once in the regular season, then the wild card game. I mean, that was like unbelievable, unbelievable. It was cold, muddy, great football weather. Um, you know, terrible towels. I got, I got a terrible towel. I was wiping with my butt, acting like I was wiping <laughs> my butt with a terrible towel. So, you know, I had a lot of fun. I mean, to the Pittsburgh fans that may be watching, I'm, hey man, it's just, it's football. You know, yeah. you know, you know, not John, but I had a lot of fun, and um, you know. Jacksonville, we just like I said, man, we gotta we gotta make this higher and then um look at that roster 
and and make some make some decisions on bringing in guys that is going to you know which I'm still kind of pissed off that they let him go but bringing in guys you know like Clayus Clayus Campbell guys yeah. are gonna make a difference um, yeah you know Clayus Campbell when I was talking about guys gotta have their A game and you know he's a guy who had played played like an A player yeah on the field off the field you know. Now, you don't you don't get a man of the year award or be a recipient uh, or you know be a guy that's um, up for that award if you're not living it. You're not living that life. And he yeah. he was living it, and um, I, I was so pissed off that the Jaguars let him go um, because of money. I mean, yeah, I, I couldn't believe that they let him go, but then they restructured Andrew Norwell's deal. I'm like, why can't you just you know recon- reconstruct? Calais's deal he's like you know one of your one of your top players and uh probably could have retired as a jaguar it's just so funny. oh he should he should have he, he was a difference maker he was a difference maker on that team and again that's the disconnect i'm talking about when with the front office you know yeah. and the front office goal convinces the ownership hey we need to do this you no, we don't need to do this we need to go in there and say look this guy has been a difference maker since he walked in the door what yeah. do we got to do to keep him those are the guys you and, and and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the front office was that great when I was playing for the Jaguars, but you know what? They kept us together as long as they could. And for the most part, Mojo, Freddie, John, Stroud, Reggie, Hayward, I mean, we all stayed together. Yeah. You know, for four or five years. And um that's that's another thing. Thing that made our team in 07 that much better. Yeah. You can look at our team in 07, point a guy out that that was his first year there. That was a guy that we really was counting on. No, I mean, you're right. There are all a lot of seasoned veterans that it was, it was, we were all seasoned veterans that played together. So we knew each other. We had a bond. Yeah. There was that chemistry. That was, Man, that's why we went out there. It was like, yo, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I always mess with Mike Smith to this day. You know, about man, why did y'all change the defense when we went to New England? People talk about we lost in New England, but we changed the whole defense. And he, and, and, and I mean, and I mess with Jack Del Rio too about it. You know, because they changed up the defense. We played a little bit more three four, which we shouldn't have. We should have stick with the th- four three the way we got there. Um, playing um, and when we went to a 3-4 which was new for us and and that's not something we was practicing a lot of man they shredded us they they ran the ball with our butt that 07 in a playoff game against New England and um, you know like I said but the thing about it is through that whole season man we were we were tight every Thursday night a bunch of us on defense and a few offensive guys we hung out you know, we all go get something to eat, you know, hang out on Thursday a little bit. Some guys hung out a little later. Most of us went home. But guess what? Friday, everybody was on time. There wasn't guys coming late. Now, it, it, you know, it happens from time to time. But for the most part, hey, we were all together. And that's what you don't you, – you're just not, you're not seeing. Yeah. You're not seeing. Speaking of changing up the defense, I mean, with – um Coach Cullen, you know, running a lot, a lot more three four this year. Um, have you talked to him at all? I know you're you're close with with Joe about kind of the struggles they're having on defense. Is, is it more of a personnel issue or just lack of veterans? Or I'm just I was kind of curious of what your your take was on the defense this year. Well, definitely it's personnel. I mean, he he don't have. I mean, Jack Joe, Jack Joe came from Baltimore. You know, and when you look at Baltimore's defense, I mean, they got they got some guys, they got some dudes up there now. They have some dudes, you know. Um, they have Clay, you know, big boy Williams in the middle. Um, you know, he don't have those big horses in the, in 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 the trenches up up in um in Jacksonville like he has like he had in Baltimore. And while you're trying in, in your first year, you're you're really trying to say, okay, let's just see who can play, you know. We're gonna put these guys in position. Who's gonna who's gonna be a guy? Don't get me wrong, Malcolm Brown, great pickup. 
plays yeah. well, played well, has played his butt off and and um and in Joe Cullen's scheme. But he's used to playing in that scheme. He played yeah. that scheme in New England. I mean, excuse me, yeah, New England. He played uh, in that same or, type or, of scheme in New England. I, I think you mean New Orleans. Oh, Malcolm Brown? Yeah, he oh he played yeah, well, in New England too. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know football here, Drew. Yeah. <laughs> I know, Paul. I, I, but, I'm no, man, but, but what I'm saying, though, it, it's not so much the Malcolm Brown. All I'm saying is that, you know, here's a guy that came in and has played well. You know, now there's some guys around him that don't fit the scheme. I'm sorry, Tim and Bryant, he don't fit that scheme. I mean, he's the first round, unfortunately, a first round guy that probably needs to, probably needs to, you probably team to move on from. Yeah, I've but, been saying that for a while. I, 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 I'm so ready for Taven Bryan to, to move he don't, on. He don't fit the scheme. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Taven Bryan is a great athlete. I, I like the kid when he was in, coming out of Florida. I liked him. I didn't think he was a first-round guy, but I liked him. I went up there and um, took him to dinner and everything when I was uh, interviewed him. And, and we didn't, I didn't work him out. I was supposed to work him out, but um, I was there for the for – the, um, what they call it? The draft, the um, the pre, um, what do they call it? Uh, the freaking workout where all the combine, huh? The combine, NFL Not combine. combine. Um, I, I saw him at the combine too, which he looked crazy. But uh, I could tell you a story about him in the, at the combine. But <laughs> um, but no, at the colleges when they have their workout, what do they call it? Pro day, pro, pro day. days, yeah. Okay. So prior to pro day, you know, I took Tatum Brown out and um, sat him down, talked to him. Intelligent young man. Um, Come from a great family. Um, I think his dad was a Navy SEAL. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, yeah. So he's out of Wyoming, which was kind of, you know, kid from Wyoming all the way to Florida. But, um, but like I said, tip kid was talented. Quick twitch, get off the ball. Um, doesn't play as strong as one would like. You know, it's something he needs to improve on. But, um, but ability, he has it. Um, you don't see it on game day. Don't know why I, I don't coach him, so I can't sit here and you know try to break that down. But um, I just think that he could he needs to be in another he needs to be play three technique um, in a four three um, to allow him to kind of utilize his talent. Um, you know, for his technique, there are some flaws there that he needs to work on. Um, that you got to point out to him and, and hope that he takes it takes to heart and, and put the work in the all season. But I just think that what Jacksonville needs at that position. He's not it. But um, but again, you have two guys in Chase on and, and Allen who are pretty much one and the same type of guy. They're lightweight, you know, outside linebackers. Um, that you're not going to get these guys to. Um, they're not run stoppers. Yeah, you know, you need a guy if you're going to put on the edge that can be able to hold the point. You know, set the edge and be able to, you know, get off blocks and make plays. You know I'm saying, not saying they didn't do that, but um, they got to grow into those positions and 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 you know, add more strength to their body. Um, but both of them are really pass rushers. They're third down. They're they're DPRs, designated pass rushers. And um, with that, you you needed guys like Jalen Ramsey, which they let go um, to help them get teams to third down. So that way you can use, utilize those guys, Jason and Allen, utilize their talent. Yeah. Um, but Miles Jack, he's in the middle. Um, but again, I think he's playing out of position. He's not a middle linebacker, but um, you know, they, they drafted him pretty high and, and they felt like they could make that change. But, you know, those are just, like I said, personal things that, you know, the Jaguars got to look at once they get a staff in there and, um, make make those changes um you know joe's a good dude great coach great technician um great teacher um but you know we'll see what happens with all that maybe yeah. he stays maybe he goes don't know i mean i never see a, i never hate to see a friend lose a job but um you know it's a part of the business it's a part of the business i mean heck I wouldn't be talking to you right now but if I had a job. So like I said, I understand I understand the business um as much as anybody when it comes to that. So but right now, man, um, you know, the team has a lot of work to do in the all season. Um, to show the fans that and with Shot Khan leading the way that they're committed to 
rolling out a team in 2022-23 that's going to be a contender. And we'll we'll see. Yeah, Paul, I wanted to share this comment with you from Brad Myers. He says, Paul remembers that the Saints many years ago were so bad like the Jaguars, the fans showed their frustration by wearing bags over their faces. I know you <laughs> mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then Drew Brees showed up. It yeah. all changed. <laughs> yeah, it all changed after that. But um, so uh, I wanted to uh, kind of wrap up with Trevor Lawrence. I wanted to talk a little bit about him. Um, you know, in my opinion, you can't really base a lot of this. It's hard to really baseline his first year just with everything going on, all the distractions around him. I mean, I think we've obviously seen him, uh, you know, in a leadership position. So um, he's got a lot of leadership skills. He handles these press conferences very well. He's got a lot of raw talent. I just don't think he's had the the staff around him to kind of, uh, you know, help build him up. So um, do you see him, do you see him getting much better next year with the new staff? Like what, what's your outlook on Trevor Lawrence? Well, first it's not just the staff. I think Trevor Lawrence himself need to look at, go back and, and, you know, look at what he's done and, and, and look at some of the mistakes he's made, some of the decisions he's made that were bad decisions. He made some good ones. Um, some of the things that were, you know, when he run the little, the little zone read inside zone um, runs where he could have pulled that ball and took off. I mean, he's a good athlete. He doesn't run enough um, personally, um, but some of the throws he made and some of the coverages that he threw the balls into. I mean, you know, he, he take your time. I mean, don't have to force it. And I think he just trying to, you know, as a competitor, you're trying to help your team win. And he made decisions to try to help his team win, which ultimately turned out to be bad ones. So he got to look at himself first and foremost before any staff will come in and just miraculously make him better. That doesn't happen. See, people don't realize as the NFL, NFL players, they got to make themselves better first. You know, yes, you can get a good coach. He's going to help you. He can show you some things. But if you don't take it upon yourself and look at yourself and say, where can I get better? And that's got to be an everyday deal. You got to be working on yourself every day as a professional athlete. And that's in any sport. If you're trying to be, if you're trying to be great. Now, if you got a mindset, I want to be just one of the guys, like I said earlier. Now, I don't get that feel from Trevor Lawrence. I think he has more to him um, to that than that. Um, I think, you know, watching him in college at Clemson and some of the things he did there. Sorry, family's home. So um, I think that he showed that he's a guy that wants to be the guy up front. He wants to um, be that leader. And that's great. That's what you want on your quarterback. He, you're nine, nine times out of ten, the quarterback is the face of the franchise. And you want a guy to want to embrace that. And he looks like he's, he has everything um, from a physical standpoint, talent standpoint, um, and – as we talked about earlier, the lack thereof of leadership in that team, hopefully his leadership will grow and not only grow, but he can get some help in that, that department from some other guys. Maybe those guys are guys getting drafted or guys they're going to sign a free agency, whatever, it may, however it may be. But he also needs his supporting cast to play better because, again, we mentioned earlier about the drops. I mean, he has some receivers that he's hitting and they're wide open and he they're dropping the ball. That's that that can't happen. You know, for a guy like him, he's young, he needs that confidence, you know, to feel like, you know, man, I'm I'm making the read, to making the throws, but guys are throwing the ball. I mean, guys are well um second, my son's coming, man. It's gonna be loud. But <laughs> yeah, I couldn't agree with you. Is, um you know, we say I just couldn't couldn't agree with you more, Paul. Uh, I'm really excited to see uh, more from Trevor next year. Um, hopefully, he gets better. But um, you know, I, I want to thank you again for coming on the show. I know uh, uh, you, you've been so gracious with your time, and and hopefully, uh, we can do this again. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, I look forward to it. We'll, we'll get together and do something. All right. Well. Thanks everybody for watching. We're going to wrap up here. And uh, Paul, how can how can listeners and, and watchers fall uh, like follow you? Do right. you have your Twitter handle? Oh, uh, Coach Spicer ninety five. Okay, Twitter. Yeah, give give Paul, 
give Paul a follow. And um, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks, Paul. And we're gonna we'll see you next time. All right, Andrew. Take care, buddy. Right. Thanks. All right.